tub party. You win. That must have been fun. Fantastic. How many people were there? Oh, even better. Okay, what did you guys do this weekend? You worked. Did everybody work? Nobody did anything fun and exciting other than the, the lady in the corner that I'll ask you more questions about that later when the cameras aren't rolling because that'll be fun. Um, what'd you do? I picked up all the dog food in my yard. That's what I was getting at because that's what I did. Don't lie to me. We were all outside. It was the first weekend of beautiful weather. Was it not? Yeah. Yes. We were outside doing yard work. We were golfing. We were tossing a ball at the park, right? That's what I did. I worked all weekend in my yard. I did yard work and I loved it. Every second of it. You know what I did? I cut down some trees, I burnt some wood, and I mulched my yard. You guys know what I'm talking about? Change that little blade and you mulch it? I couldn't believe how much grass came up. Like six garbage bags. And you know what I did with those garbage bags of grass? I burnt them. <laughs> which may not seem like a big deal to you guys, but to me, it was a victory. Because let me tell you, I got a story about grass clippings that'll blow your mind. We don't know how blessed we are here in Alberta to be able to burn our grass clippings, all right? I'll tell you something, back in New Brunswick, my husband, he's military, all right? First time we ever lived together. It was on an army base. He got posted out to New Brunswick, or a monk dope to be exact. Woo! Thank you. There's one person who knows that it's on the map. <laughs> you were born there. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, man. I really am. <laughs> uh, we got posted up to this army base in New Brunswick or Moncto, all right? Now, my husband and I, we had never even lived together at this point in time. This is the first time we ever lived together. And not only are we living together, but he just plucked a comedian out of society and popped her on through an army base, right? And there's no comedy clubs there. There's no comedy shows. There's no creative outlet out there. There isn't even any real jobs out there. So I felt, well, you know what? I can't do comedy. I can't really find a job here. I got to make myself useful. So we lived on a, in a PMQ, tiny little house, but our yard was like a corner lot. All right, it was like an acre of land that we lived on. So I had me one of them driving tractors, right? Y'all know what I'm talking about? Yeah. So one day I'm out there, I go and I, I'm driving that around, I'm mowing this big old acre of land, and I ended up with like 12 garbage bags of grass clippings, okay? So what do you do with grass clippings? You burn them, right? So I go to burn them. Well, don't I get in trouble? The MPs pull up. They give me a warning. The military police, you can't burn your grass clippings. I was like, oh, okay, I'm so sorry. I won't do that. So the next week, I, I, I went and I mowed my lawn again, packed up all my grass clippings. I bagged them and I put them in the garbage. That same day, MPs knocking on my door. You can't bag your, 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 gar your grass clippings up. You're not allowed to do that. And I'm looking at my husband. And he's like, Steph, like, you got to stop doing stuff like this, like you hadn't been here a week. <laughs> like you're gonna get me in trouble. The MBs have been here twice, one more morning, and they're gonna kick you off the base. Like we're not married yet, right? So I was like, well, what am I gonna do with these grass clippings? What am I gonna do? And I'm so aggravated that my OCD is going crazy because I have no place to put these grass clippings, right? So my husband's like, we'll just scatter them all over the lawn. I'm like, that's disgusting. We're gonna look like trash. We have an acre worth of grass clippings. I can't just leave them. So the comedian in me, <laughs> with no creative outlet, came up with a brilliant idea. And here it was. I grabbed me a jerry can full of gas. I grabbed me my driving tractor. I filled it up. I went and I cut that grass. But I went this way, and I went that way, and I went this way, and I went that way, and I built myself a 70 foot by 50 foot Batman logo on my front lawn and a grass clippings. <laughs> There's pictures on Facebook, true story. I'm not even as big as the ear. That's how big this Batman logo was. And no word of a lie, the street light at night shone down on it. Just perfect. There's a seven-year-old boy driving his bike down the street and he stops and he looks, he's like, oh, that is epic. 
It's like it is epic. We had a friend who was in aviation. She's up in the sky, calls my husband. Dude, I think you've got a Batman logo on your front lawn. <laughs> and my husband's like, oh, Steph. <laughs> so he gets home from work that day. And he says, Steph, we gotta sit down and have a talk. Like, you can't do stuff like this. Like, things have to be done properly and by a rule book here on base. Like, you can't do that. And as he's, you know, giving me the gears about this, knock, knock, knock on the front door. CMPs again, right? And they're like, sir, did you put a Batman logo on your front lawn? And my husband's like, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do, right? Do I admit it and take the third warning and get a fine? Do I admit it or, t or, or tell it on her and say, I didn't do it, she did it, and get my butt kicked off the army base because I'm not supposed to be there in the first place. And he, we were only engaged at the time. I, I, I've got to mention that. So he had a, a very clear out. You know what I mean? He could have had me shipped to Alberta. He wouldn't have had to worry about me no more. And I can just see the gears turning on my fiance. I can see him and he's looking at the MP and he's looking back at me and he's got a choice. You can see he's sweating. He's looking at the MP. Look at it. Look at the MP. Look at it. Looks back at the MP. He's like, I am Batman. <laughs> So when people look at my husband, and then they look at me, and they're like, really? You married this guy? Why? Because he's Batman. That's why. Uh, how are you guys doing tonight? Good. Yeah? Oh, good. Uh, my dad works at a paper towel factory, uh, but he never lets me come and visit him. So. Needless to say, I have daddy tissues. I'll tell you something about me I bet you don't know, although you guys probably do. I smell bad. but I taste amazing. <clears throat> My name's Troy Patterson, I'm 40 years old. Some say that age is just a number, not me. Four, now four is a number. I should tell my curd joke. Get it out of the way. <clears throat> I'm very hairy. I don't know if you noticed. <clears throat> I'm so hairy now that uh, when I turn sideways, I look like a music note. I like to talk about hair a lot. I say the word hair too much. But so what? So what if I say the word hair too much? Like, why do you care? <laughs> oh. I think I just peed a little. <laughs> Why did the chicken cross the road? Why? Just because? <laughs> My girlfriend uh, told me she was out of bananas and nuts. 
I said, oh, muffin. <clears throat> when I travel, <clears throat> when I travel, I, I get this song stuck in my head, and it drives me nuts. I would like to sing it for you as a closer tonight, but I want you guys to sing it with me eventually, so then it will be stuck in your heads forever, too. Okay, will you guys sing the song with me? Okay. <clears throat> I don't want to sing this song I don't want to sing this song I do not want to sing this song boom, boom, boom. I will not sing this song boom, boom, boom. I will not sing this song boom, boom, boom. I will not sing this song boom, boom, boom. I will not sing this song We won't even whisper it we We will not sing this song. We will not sing this song. We won't even whisper it. <laughs> That's my turn. Yes, yes, it's my birthday. Let's get it all out of the way now. Okay, we good? Good, because now I'm going to destroy your expectations. All right, how many people here live with roommates? How many like, people like to mess with their roommates? How many people have roommates that are scared of horror movies? Ooh, this is gonna be a good story. All right, so my roommate the other night watched Insidious 2 for the first time. She couldn't sleep for a week. She made the mistake of telling me. So, I got an app on my phone that blocks my phone number, gives a different one. So every now and then, in the middle of the night, her phone go off, she goes, hello? All she'll hear is, tiptoe through the tulips. And she's screaming bloody murder. And I'm outside, because, well, I don't want her to know I'm in the next room. Neighbor comes out and goes, seriously, again? I couldn't resist. I thought he was gonna yell at me, he goes, tell me how you do that, I wanna do it to my kid. So needless to say, that kid's gonna need therapy, and I'm proud of that. But I get as much as I even get. So, how many of you here have ever lost a bet and had to do something really stupid? Woo! You? What'd you have to do? A swirly. Okay, I'm gonna share something with you that I've never shared with anybody until tonight. This goes back to a couple years when it was my company's golf tournament and I lost. If this is not embarrassing, I don't know what is. Thank you. So. A couple years ago, I'm still living in Calgary. It comes to our annual company golf tournament. Now, my boss is paying for extra golf lessons because I'm the only guy in the company that's paid who's ever played golf. <laughs> golf is fun, I will admit that. It's just an excuse, you know, to skip work. Am I right, Peter? Sure, we'll go with that. <laughs> okay, yeah, it's a family friendly show. Let's go with that. <laughs> so, so I start off the game and every one of my shots is slicing badly to the left. Now I go, okay, it's the start of the game. I'm gonna adjust. All my shots were originally going this way, I want them to go that way. So I adjust. Shots are now going the direction I want. It's a close game, we get to the end. I'm leading by one stroke. We get to the final hole. Water hazard, sand trap. I got the backwards, the water hazard was on the other side. I take my shot. The one time it goes straight! I go, okay, 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 okay. I'm good, I'm good. It's tied, I can still beat him. I can still beat him, I'll just take the drop. We're good to go, I can still beat him. Hole in one. Oh, yeah. Yep, so there's my boss going, well you owe me $400. <laughs> well let's just find out what they want me to do first. So I go up to the guy I'm up against. All right, so I know we made a wager of $500, $400, was it? He goes, yep, do I have to pay? Well, you can do something stupid in exchange. Out of curiosity, was this something stupid? You have to dye your hair flamingo pink. Okay, so let's see. Uh, it's $60, uh, I can use the rest of the money to you know, get rid of that pain. Yeah, I'll do it. So we go to the company barbecue afterwards. They hold me down, bleach my hair till my scalp is burning. We wash it out, 
They look at my uh, platinum blonde hair and went, oh man, that's a punishment enough. Yeah. I go, okay, I'll go to the barber afterwards, shave this off. Oh, no, 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 no. The company photographs are coming up. You've got to keep that hair until the roots start showing. Oh, no. <laughs> Needless to say, two months, I look good with frosted tips. <laughs> <laughs> but my, the best part, the best part was when I went home, because I'm still with my parents. I'm wearing a toque. We're having dinner. My parents go, Devin, take the toque off. No. Take the toque off. Take it off. My dad looks at me and goes, put the toque back on! <laughs> my dogs growled at me. Yeah. But that's my time, folks. Let's bring Steph back up here. Uh, I have a mission today. I want to talk to you guys about something tonight. I want to talk to you about sexism in the media. Do you follow the media at all? Have you seen yeah. current events, stuff like that? Uh, have you heard? Uh, there's a travesty against equality out there right now. A media character recently in the news uh, coming under fire for burying a lot of their chest. Someone whose uh, message and conversation is constantly be belittled by their good looks and, and fair, fair skin. You all know who I'm talking about, right? Yeah. Justin Trudeau. <laughs> Prime Minister, I steal your girl. Which I must feel, I feel I'm kind of part to blame here. We had so many years where we had just axe-faced, battle-axe prime ministers. And you know, we wanted to have the hip, cool prime minister. Wanted to have that one so we could be in the news and stuff like that. And needless to say, like, our prime ministers were cool. I liked our old prime ministers, Jean Chrétien. Yeah. Badass! That dude was amazing. Burglar comes to his house. Does he call the police? No. Sneaks up the guy, or sneaks up behind the guy, grabs a statue, <laughs> takes care of it himself, then calls the police. Those are prime ministers. <laughs> anyway, I just wanted to get that off my chest. Another thing I wanted to talk to you, segways are weird, eh? Friendship's weird, too. <laughs> Friendship's so strange, I, I, I get parts of it, but I don't get a lot of it. It's like, you walk around and you're like, hey, you, human, I like what you're doing. We should do things together. <laughs> very strange, very strange. I, I choose people, I'm friends with people who interest me, who have like interesting things or, or weird things about them. I have, um, I have this one friend who's, he's a compulsive, He's got uh, this compulsive behavior. He can't see a piece of paper without uh, just drawing a white fluffy dog on it. He's a poodle doer. <laughs> so I'm recently single. And I, but I enjoy being single. I enjoy being single like a cow enjoys being hamburger. <laughs> like, a, like a bird enjoys flying into a window. I enjoy being single like a mouse enjoys a mouse trap. I enjoy being single like a person who's afraid of clowns enjoys the circus. I enjoy being sing single like a person who's drowning enjoys the water. I enjoy being single like an Eskimo enjoys global warming. <laughs> so my dad's had a real change of heart since the transplant. <laughs> my brother had an accident with a chainsaw, so now he's my half-brother. <laughs> Then he joined the police force, so now he's my brother-in-law. <laughs> this, uh, this next joke is a real game changer. I was uh, playing Yahtzee with my sister, but that got a bit dicey. <laughs> so we had to switch to Monopoly until she swallowed the top hat. 
I had no clue. But we had to play Operation. Now I'm no doctor, but I took a risk. <laughs> then I got into trouble and had to say sorry. Did I screw up? Who no, I did. But that's life. I could, uh, I could tell these jokes all night, but that'd be hard on my cranium. Plus, then I eventually I'd have to scrabble to find my next joke. So, um, uh, something, something, Candyland. Thank you. So I had a bunch of stuff that I planned to say tonight, but uh, I want to tell you guys a story. I got scalped on some concert tickets, re con some concert tickets recently, and so I talked to my friend James, and he said, "Hey, I have a friend." who uh, got scalped on some tickets at a hockey game, and you should talk to him because he actually got his money back. So I messaged this friend, because I know him as well, and I said, hey, uh, how did that go, uh, getting your money back? Is that something that I could do as well? Like, was it tough to do, or how did the process go? And he was like, I wouldn't recommend it to you because it was a part of a highly dangerous undercover police sting operation. Now, when you hear a statement like that, I always wonder, have I faced a situation like this before? Well, I have been part of highly dangerous situations. I was in a car accident recently. I would say that's pretty highly dangerous. And I've had a lot of operations. I've been cut up more than a 12-inch pizza at Domino's. So I guess that counts. Um, now, you guys uh, might find this next one hard to believe, but I also, uh, I wonder, you know, have I, uh, have I ever been part of any sort of sting? Well, you might be surprised to know that I actually did meet Sting. In fact, I met the whole band, the police, during the 2007-2008 reunion tour. <laughs> Was pretty crazy, um, but uh, yeah, <laughs> can't remember what I was gonna say uh, <laughs> during that statement. However, it was gonna be good, so there's that. Woo! Now, this next one you might find hard to believe as well, but since I do have a girlfriend, I have been spending a lot of time under the covers recently. <laughs> So for me, that basically checks off all the boxes. But I was like, this might be dangerous, I don't know if I want to do that. So I called the police. And you won't believe what they told me. They said, Roxanne! And I did that because I decided I wanted to pursue stand-up comedy full-time. And judging, because I heard they got paid in laughs. So uh, judging by your reaction tonight, I'm still really broke. <laughs> I also got a uh, fine arts degree from a certain university. So now I'm a certified sandwich artist. I used to work at a, uh, a store that sold vegetables um, and fruits and uh, products that involve apples. Uh, and the, things that, the thing that drives me crazy about <laughs> apples, the thing that drives me bananas about working for a store corporation like that is when you see a lot of attractive women in a store like that, you just cantaloupe. <laughs> As I mentioned, 
mentioned, I do have a girlfriend, and uh, you know, I would say we have a very exciting relationship. So uh, the other day, uh, we went out for a walk outside, and uh, we, we like to try new things in our relationship. So uh, I was on a swing, and uh, we, like, you know, we have a very exciting relationship. So sometimes, when I get excited, I actually say the word yippee. I, I get really excited. So she pushes me on the swing, and as we get to the top of the swing, I fall off. It's okay though, my doctor tells me I should be walking again in four to six weeks. So that's pretty awesome. But uh, unfortunately, uh, the police told me I'm not allowed on playgrounds anymore. <laughs> you, you won't actually believe what they told me. They said, Roxanne! <laughs> you don't have to do that joke again! <laughs> Thank you very much, President Harry. Have a good night! But no, seriously, I got some good stories about working in the patch. It was actually a good time for me. Um, got to keep it clean here, folks. So uh, there are going to be some pretty mild stories. We might get into the better ones later. Um, I used to have to pump water off a site because uh, I was working for dirt work guys and, you know, can't move uh, wet dirt, apparently. I don't know. I think it all moves the same. It's, it's dirt. But I'm going to get paid $24 an hour to go put a pump in a hole. I can do it. Unfortunately, I found out how deep some of these holes get really quickly. Yeah, normally, you know, remember when you were kids, you used to go out and you're like, well, how deep is this water? And you grab a stick and you're just like, okay, it's not that deep, it's not that deep. <laughs> stick test. And I'm sitting there with a little, little pump and a hose attached to it. And it's like a 50 foot hose. Just bear in mind how long this thing is. I do the stick test because I have no idea how deep this thing is. And I'm like, okay, it's not that bad. I go boom, boom, and apparently I disappeared. All six feet of me and about 25 feet of hose went into this hole. Gone, instantly. I'm like, and, I, and I'm trying to get my own way back up. I get reached down, grabbed up by the back of my neck, pulled all the way out. My buddy looks at me and goes, guess it's deeper than you thought, wasn't it? <laughs> Thanks, Captain Obvious, now I need to go change. But, he learned holes are deep too, very quickly. Because <laughs> we had to go out and hike through two clicks of muskeg up in Fort McMurray. There's sinkholes in that stuff, which we found, he found out very quickly too. It was awesome. Because we're hiking through the forest, he's leading the way, and just all happy as a clam, because we get to go away from the site and do whatever we want. Lazy. And, all of a sudden, I lose sight of him. And I'm like, Preston! Preston! Can't find him. And then I hear, mm -hmm. I look around, look around. About 30 feet in front of me, here's Preston, passed up against the ground. Up to here. Up to here. I pull him out of the hole, and I'm like, eh, deeper than you thought, wasn't it? <laughs> he looks at me and goes, you are such a jerk. <laughs> Karma. And I started leading the way, and guess who found the next sinkhole? <laughs> Karma. <laughs>